What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Keep It Awesome podcast, the podcast that brings you the most interesting, quirky, and fascinating people of central Wisconsin. And uh, sometimes we're going to include quirky situations. Uh, we don't have a very typical podcast today. Today, I want to do a podcast about the PFAS situation in Wausau. I think this is important to do because I think there are there's a lot of confusion around it, and a lot of people are a little confused about how to treat it, what it, what it all means. So we're going to break it down. I'm going to go through the facts as I've sussed them out, and uh, we're going to hear from Katie Rosenberg today, uh, a mayor of Wausau, and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the latest and what's going on at the city level. And uh, I'm not sure who else is. I'm recording this now to get the basic facts out. Um, there might be other people that appear on the podcast. I'm not sure. So you'll know as you read this. First, I want to thank our sponsors that make this podcast possible. Uh, thanks so much to Scotty's Ale House and Eatery. If you have not gone there and tried their amazing beer selection, you really ought to, really ought to go check it out. Uh, great food. I've always been really impressed by the food there. And uh, they, they, they're willing to try new things. You know, they had a brunch for a while where they were doing some, uh, they were doing like a ramen, a ramen uh, breakfast, which I appreciated. And so go check them out. Uh, also brought to you by Campbell Haynes Menswear. Guys, this shirt I'm wearing right now is from Campbell Haynes. And these guys, uh, let me tell you, they're going to treat you right. Always been really happy with them. Uh, Patrick and Ken are going to treat you well. And uh, one of the things I, I like to talk about with them is that they are, a lot of people think because they're a small store that they're going to be more expensive, but they're actually quite competitive compared to some of the uh, big box stores, which will go unnamed. So be sure to stop on down there at the corner of 3rd and Jefferson, right at right Kitty Corner from the 400 block. Tell them I sent you. Tell them, tell them uh, the Keep It Awesome podcast sent you. It's good, to, good for them to hear. So again, Campbell Haynes Menswear, big thanks to you guys. And we are brought to you by Verve Salon. And Verve Salon, what I like about them is that they are all-inclusive. They, they got stuff for everybody. It doesn't matter your hair type, your skin type. You know, they, they got you covered there and uh, they got a spa service connected next door now down in Schofield. Uh, really great folks. I've had Marie on the podcast. She's a she's a pretty cool person. Always has a unique hairstyle. You know, uh, does a lot of different colors and uh, pretty impressive stuff. I've seen some of her work and she really, she really does a great job over there. So go check out Verve Salon today. Go and book, go, go book your appointment today. And enough of the, enough of the sponsors though, and we thank all of them for supporting the show. But we're going to get to PFAS. So, so this was a couple of weeks ago. It was on a Wednesday. The mayor announced that PFAS had been detected in all of the city's drinking well wells. All the water where all the drinking all the wells where the water for drinking water comes from had PFAS levels higher than the what what's been proposed as the new health standard for PFAS. So to start off with, you know, what is PFAS? Well, basically it is these, you know, it's these chemicals, they're found, they're found in like 5,000 different, there's 5,000 different substances are found in products, all, all kinds of products, everything from like firefighting foam to like fast food wrappers, uh, different types of plastics. They're just, they're kind of everywhere. So uh, what they are is they can be a carcinogenic and can build up in your body over time. So I, I kind of think of this as like, well, we'll get to we'll get to we'll get to that. But it, basically, they're they're not good for you. They kind of build up over time. It's not like, you know, it's not the kind of toxin where you you take it in and you fall over. But it's like over time, it builds up poor health effects, including cancer. So, so 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 what happened is that they found that the city's water wells, all of them had tested between twenty three and 48 parts per trillion. Now the current standard that's on the law that's on the books is that all drinking water must be under 70 parts per trillion. And so all of Wausau's drinking water meets that standard. However, with uh, the new research that come, that's come out, people believe the, the, the emerging standard now that the DNR is trying to push is 20 parts per trillion. So all the drinking water all the drinking water in the city is testing at higher than that level. As you can see, some of it, like at 23 parts per trillion, that's not very high over, but then 48 actually is pretty high over. So that's important to keep in mind. Uh, so, so why, why this 20 parts per trillion? Well, 
what they found in the research is they modeled it based on what would be dangerous to an infant who is uh, breastfeeding. So 20 parts per trillion is under that is considered a fairly safe level. And this, this, this is taking into account a lot of research and then modeling based on that research to find where the adverse health effects would come for the most vulnerable person. And then they modeled that out to, you know, what does that look like for an adult as well? Uh, now, Wausau's situation is unique because actually a lot of municipalities are finding PFAS. Uh, the Rim Mountain Sanitation District recently found levels higher than, you know, um, higher than the current standard. So they shut the well down, one of the wells, it was in one of their wells. Um, most communities have found this in one or two of their wells and not all of them. So that's, that's where Wassa is unique in this because Wassa actually found it in all the wells. So the solution that a lot of communities took where they just shut down one of the wells, they can't do that. There's just too many because, because it's in all of them. So what's, what's being done about it? So that's where I want to talk about today. I'm going to spend a little more time on this because this has been sort of an evolving thing. Uh, the mayor called for emergency meetings of the Water Commission, as well as the City Council, and the Water Commission took about six days to meet, and the Council just ended up meeting, like having a committee of the whole, after its regular meeting about two weeks later. So that wasn't very effective, I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, one of the things, uh, so the short term and long term. Well, the short term is like, what can we do to get citizens water now that tests under the 20 PPT, 20 parts per trillion. So one of the things that's being thrown about is the idea of getting people filters or pitchers. Well, I should say, I should back up actually, one of the first things that's happening is the city has obtained some pallets of water for people. So. And the neighbor's place had water already. So the neighbor's place was giving it out to some people and the city has secured some pallets of bottled water. Uh, I might have, I'm gonna ask Katie Rosenberg later today about what the plan is for that. But another thing that's being discussed is the idea of purchasing kind of, kind of filters for residents, whether that be a reverse osmosis filter, it'd probably be the most expensive and uh, least likely to happen or the under the sink or the ones that attach to the nozzle or, or filters. But, and we're gonna get into, I'm, I'm gonna explain something about filters in a minute too. But basically they would fund that through ARPA dollars. So that's the American Rescue Plan Act that was passed under Biden, the Biden administration. Um, communities got a lot of money for various things. And that's, that's one of the things that they could use it for. So something to keep in mind. Pardon me while I take a drink. So you know what that looks like will be is kind of to be determined. Um, now, long-term solutions. There's a couple of things they could do. One, there is a pilot study that they had already planned even before they made this announcement. So what they would do is they'd be starting in March. They'd be testing a, a variety of substances to find out which one could reliably lower the PFAS level in the drinking water down to below that 20 parts per trillion standard. And so that's underway, that will be that will be happening starting up in March, they're gonna be testing that out and then they can apply that to the new drinking water facility when that opens later this summer. And uh, they, they also talked about the possibility of mixing in other water sources, like there's not enough capacity to simply bring in water from another community completely. There's just no one, there's no one who could really supply that much water. However, there is the idea of bringing in an outside source as well as shutting down some of the worst wells, which are number three and number six, those tested the highest. And so that's something that's gonna be happening. And then hopefully in the end, there's one other solution too. And that was brought up by uh, City Council President Becky McElhaney, she preferred this idea of bringing in a mobile filtration unit to the water plant. And the way that would work, they'd have to cut a hole out of the existing water plant, 
pump the water out into this mobile filtration system, pump it back into the plant, and then it goes out to everybody. Now, there's some advantages of that. You don't have to worry about the distribution aspects. Everybody will get the same water. Uh, the downside is it's going to take probably at least three months to get all set up. And then it would operate for about three months, and then presumably we would have the new solution in place anyway. So you would spend a lot of money to only cover about half the time that needs to be covered. So, and that point was brought up by uh, Lisa Rasmussen, who used to be the council president and served on the council quite a while. So the that's still ongoing. We don't know what the emergency plan will be ultimately, whether they buy those filters. And uh, I do, before I get to my interview with Katie Rosenberg, I do want to talk about the filters. Um, so uh, the DHS website talks about how the carbon activated filters work by attracting, attracting the particles kind of like a magnet. And so, so they pull the PFAS out and you should be safe. So then I found a study from Duke University where they tested about 89 different filters. And the filters, uh, you know, the filters had a very, there was a lot of variation in how they worked. So some worked really, really well, some worked hardly at all. And the, the study claimed that they found no, no, no link between the ones that worked and why they worked. In other words, they couldn't find, you know, this filter has feature X and because it has feature X, that's, those are the ones that all worked. So we can say that the ones with feature X are the ones that work, right? Um, they just, they just couldn't find a trend line. It just seemed, it just seemed to be completely random. Now, one of the things that someone, a reader pointed out, and I thought this was a good thing to point out. And I looked more into this and it appears that reader is correct that the, there, there are two different standards. Well, actually there's a few different standards, but two that are relevant for our discussion. There's NSF 42 and NSF 53. Now the NSF 42 is the standard. And most of the pictures you just go buy at Target or Walmart or wherever will adhere to. And basically those are designed to make your drinking water clean and take out dirt and residue and you know make it basically just clean water. Uh, doesn't it's not rated or intended to filter anything like PFAS. Now the NSF 53 is designed to take out PFAS. And what I found really surprising because NS NSF 53 is a rating specifically for PFAS. <laughs> like it's, 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 that's one of the things it's, it's most important to be rated for. Uh, the Duke University study did not at all take into account anything to do with NSF rating. It's not mentioned anywhere in the study, not, not the write-up of the study, nor the, the actual study itself. I researched all the documents. I also couldn't find a list of the filters and how they did. And it seemed like, that seems like a glaring omission. Both of those are glaring omissions from that study. So that's pretty disturbing. So what I would say is if you are, if you don't wanna wait for the city solution, and listen, I'm, I'm not an expert in this. This is what I've come, come up with so far. And it seems to be based on the NSF 53 standard. This is a water safety standard. Um, the NSF, if it's rated for NSF 53, it should filter out the PFAS and you should be fine. So if, that's, if, if you're very, very concerned about this, then you probably should grow up and get one of those filters if you like. Now, I really thought a lot about how I wanted to handle this because I don't want to tell anybody how to think, but I am going to explain my own thoughts about PFAS in the current situation. In my opinion, we've been operating under the 70 parts per trillion standard for quite some time. We've all been drinking that water. We've been drinking that water for years and years and years, most of our life. So my presumption is that the level of PFAS has been decreasing and not increasing. Though I would, of course, entertain evidence to the contrary, but typically standards around drinking water and stuff gets better, not worse, uh, Flint, Michigan, notwithstanding. So I'm presuming, I'm presuming that we've actually been exposed to higher levels of PFAS in the past than we are now, considering environmental standards tend to get better over time and not worse. 
So my thought is, while I think it's a very, very good thing to reduce the levels of PFAS to that 20 parts per trillion standard, uh, I also don't think it's the end of the world if we keep drinking the water for a few more months. Now, that's just my opinion. Uh, other, I know people, there are people who range from extremely concerned about this to where they don't want to touch the water because they believe it's toxic to, you know, the water we've been wasting our time on this. I, I kind of hit the middle ground there. I think we definitely should be doing this, but I also think that if we've been drinking this water for years and years and years, then another couple months probably isn't going to make a huge difference. And it's not, like I said, it's also not really that much higher over the standard. It's, you know, the new standard. Now there's some, some I've heard some rumblings and I don't know this for sure, but I've heard some rumblings about the 70 parts per trillion being not really based in science, but more based in like what, <laughs> what could be passed politically, which wouldn't surprise me based on what I know about how politics really works. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. You know, bottom line is I, I do what you think is best for you. You know, do, do what you think is best for your safety and your family. Don't, don't take my word for it. Do, you know, do your own research as well. And, uh, you know, so it, it kind of depends on your risk level and what your tolerance is for that risk. So if you decide, if you, if you, there are solutions, you know, I'd buy an NSF, NSF 53 filter if you feel strongly about it. If you don't, you could wait for the city to come up with their solution and get one of their filters when they come out with them. And that's all up to you. So I don't want to tell you anything about what to do there. So beyond that, um, let's hand it over to my interview with Katie Rosenberg and see what she has to say. So Mayor, KFAS, what's the, what's the latest? <laughs> Jump in in right into We're it. jumping right in. Yeah, so um, at the beginning of this year, um, I, I found that our, our team was approached by the DNR and asked mm -hmm. if we would test our wells for PFAS. Um, you'll remember la at the end of last year, uh, Rib Mountain had a well that tested um, mm -hmm. for elevated levels and they were able to turn that off. So the DNR has been going around in our general region and asking, you know, would you mm -hmm. be willing to test? And of course, like my answer is yes, of course. Um, we wanna know, we wanna be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, wanting to be prepared you're not ever really prepared for the fact that you'd have elevated levels of PFAS in every single one of your wells. yeah were you surprised about that yeah I was um because like what because Wasso was unique in that it was all of it was in one or, or, or all of the wells tested were, right in all the other municipalities they had it was only in a few wells so they right. could just shut down those wells Wasso right couldn't yeah really do that. we couldn't do that and you know we're we're mm -hmm. looking at what can we do you know some wells are more elevated than others so can we turn those off can we treat the water um, at those wells um, to remove the PFAS and kind of dilute that? And that's what some other municipalities mm -hmm. are doing. Um, and again, like the levels we found are between 23 parts per trillion and 48 parts mm -hmm. per trillion. So we're talking a very small amount. Um, and we're also talking some confusion when it comes to both the federal uh, guidelines that aren't regulatory and the state guidelines that aren't regulatory. So you know, the federal guidelines are 70 parts per trillion and the state um, up until mm -hmm. this week uh, kind of had been pushing this uh, 20 parts per trillion. So that's mm -hmm. that's where the health advisory is from the Department of Health Services. They say, um, and I actually called them back this week after the DNR board um, and I said, what does this mean for us? They said, well, the health advisory is still the health advisory. If this were to happen to you tomorrow and we got the same results, we would ask you to notify the public in the same way. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're at. Um, yeah, and so I'll kind of give people a rundown of like the story so far, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the city's efforts, where it's going right now, uh, what we're working on. I know you talked about some some bottled water that you guys had obtained, and sure. there's some plans to uh, in the short term and then also the long term. Yeah, so we have the really short term, and then we have the shorter long term. Um, so. Right now, uh, we've had a special utility commission meeting. Mm -hmm. We've had a special uh, committee of the whole meeting. Um, and then there's been a finance committee meeting kind of allocating a quarter of a million dollars towards pilot study. So um, all of those meetings are happening. We're kind of working towards policy solutions. Um, but in the interim, you know, there are lots of folks, we've been working with Wisconsin Emergency Management, 
county emergency management getting in touch um, because we are concerned about the fact that if you have means, you can probably figure out what to do with yourself. You can buy your own bottled water, you can buy a filter, you can like there are these things that you can do if you have means. But if you don't, if you're in part of an underserved mm -hmm. population, you don't get to make that choice about your own health. So right. that's what really we want to make sure people are able to make that choice. So um, we've been working with some corporations who've been willing to donate pallets of water. Um, and they've been working through the Neighbors Place and United Way um, and some of those agencies that they work with. So that's available if folks need that. Um, contact the Neighbors Place. They'll be able to talk to you about distribution. Um, I've had several reach out to me, so it's been encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, the policy bodies now are deciding how do we move forward? Right. Do we want to issue everybody an under the sink filter? You know, might be a good idea. Um, but kind of figuring out, okay, how do we make sure everybody installs it correctly? How do we make sure that I had a guy after that committee of the whole meeting come up to me and say, Hey, you know, that's a really great idea, but I contacted my landlord and he said, he didn't want me messing around with the plumbing like that. Like I could put one on my sink, but not this one that you're suggesting. So, you know, we're working through that too, those populations, um, that need a little bit more support. So. I think probably the best answer is one that addresses the water that's coming out of your tap as quickly as possible. So I know that we had uh, a firm on site um, with these uh, granular activated carbon, big old filters basically, um, mm -hmm. figuring out how could this plug into our system so that we can remove enough PFAS to get under that 20 parts per trillion. This must be a hard situation to deal with because there's so much, there's so much information to take in and so much, so much science that, you know, even even a fairly science, scientifically literate person right. might make errors or misunderstandings. Yeah. Uh, I had my own issue with that with the filters uh, when I came across that Duke study that said that they found no consistent results. It turned out there were some problems with that study. They didn't nowhere in the study that they talk about NS, the NSF level, of, right. which is a pretty key element. Like so, right. to have that completely missing from that study is is kind of disturbing, actually. And I've come to find out that the NS, NSF 42 is kind of like your garden variety filter that you buy at Target or whatever. Right. It doesn't really do much for uh, for PFAS, but then the NSF 53 is designed specifically to filter out PFAS. Right. And then you still have to worry because some of those filters um, are designed at the, uh, I mean, you don't have to worry. You, you can mm -hmm. worry. Um, right. There's a lot to think about. Um, but they're designed to filter to the level of the federal government recommendation, right? That's 70 parts per trillion. So you have some that do more than that. Um, but you do, if, if you have something that says it filters out PFAS, you have to then ask yourself, okay, to what level? Um, and okay. what level are you willing to um, think about when, in regards to your own, you know, consumption of water? And, you know, frankly, like for me, I'm just, <laughs> I just, I've just been doing whatever. I've been drinking the yeah. water and again that's my choice i get to make it mm -hmm. um and i want other people to be able to make that choice right we've had a lot of conversations over the last two years about making your own health choices and what that means for populations you know i had that i mean i i, I kind of talked about that in the earlier segment that i just felt like we've been drinking this all our lives it was probably worse when we were younger than it is now it would be my presumption since environmental regulations usually get more strict and not less and the testing becomes time. more sensitive and the testing more so that's another good point too the testing will become more sensitive so my thought is well i felt it's good to address this issue it's probably at least for me and of course like as i said and as you said too other people can make that decision uh for themselves but i felt like for me it's like well i'm just going to kind of keep doing what i'm doing and uh let the situation resolve itself but other people, of course, can make that decision about the yeah. level of emergency that they want to ascribe to this. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing is that you know people need to be able to make that choice. They need to have the ability. So I, it's a, it's a struggle. And when there are people saying that it doesn't matter, let's just wait. That's fine for some people. But you know, mm -hmm. if let's say you are in the market to have a baby or you have one, mm -hmm. um, I think those are a lot of the questions when I think about the science. Um, that the questions that are raised in my mind is how does this how does this affect a developing child like it, it, that's something that um, you do want to think about so and can you explain to folks what happened at the natural resources board on Wednesday sure and, yeah uh, I mean I didn't watch the whole meeting but I did attend a little bit I did provide some testimony um, mm -hmm. but ultimately 
they voted to um, they voted on a bunch of things related to PFAS and water. But mm -hmm. when it comes to municipal drinking water, they pushed uh, to the governor's office a, a regulatory standard of 70 parts per trillion that kind of matches with the current federal guideline, which we're guessing will change um, as they continue their research into it too. So, uh, yep. So they did not adopt the 20. They didn't. Um, and, you know, like the process of this is it goes to the governor's office, they decide if they want to forward to the legislature. You know, we're getting down to the wire when it comes to that legislature because I think they're getting ready mm -hmm. to um, adjourn. So um, this turnaround has to be pretty quick. Uh, the good news, like if you, if you're wondering about protective, um, protective standards when it comes to 20 versus 70, um, you know, if, if the legislature were to pass the 70 parts per trillion, it would mean that all municipalities are now testing and reporting. So we would have that information. So that's good. Um, and you could work on people can work on changing it, right? Like if we just if the federal government decides that that's not protective enough, they'll change it. Um, and I know they're they're deep in the research because I've been talking to them. Uh, now it sounds like, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like even even if the state adopts a 70 parts per trillion standard, the DNR is still going to be recommending 20 parts per trillion, and the city will probably still be working toward getting to theirs. So. Right. So there's yeah. So there's a little the the research that the Department of Health Services has done and. Um, recommended to the DNR is that 20 parts per trillion or lower is best for human health. So um, that doesn't change unless, you know, whoever's in charge over there, the secretary um, says, all right, we're done. You're not recommending that anymore. We're not going to talk. So like, that's a policy decision that needs to be made on their level. But at the committee meeting that we had this week, um, it does feel like the council, um, not everyone, but many on the council said that you know, that 20 parts per trillion or below, that's where we want to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Based on the science, right? Right. Long and short of it, the city isn't going to go, oh, well, see, it's at 70. So I mean, I can't predict what happens right, with this, these policy bodies. Um, every time I do, I'm wrong. So right. <laughs> but, you never know. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be up to the council to change that direction. Yep. Yep. But until then, city staff. That's is what still we're working towards, towards, right? Yeah. Like, that's the, okay. that's the direction I felt we got. So we're going to keep moving. Well, any anything else that you'd want to give listeners or viewers about PFAS? You know, I think this is one of those issues that is kind of complex and people maybe don't know what to even say about it. Um, mm -hmm. They just want access to safe water. So um, if you do have opinions, we'd love to hear from you. You know, we have opportunities for feedback at our meetings, uh, you can email, call, all of the things. You know, I imagine everyone's. you've been hearing a lot already. Yeah, I've been hearing from some people. It's, I think it's one of those issues though where people, they wanna spend some time with it. They wanna understand what does this mean? Mm -hmm. um, how long has this been going on? And I think there's a lot of um, confusion over the fact that they, there actually were test results in 2019. Like, why didn't we know? It's so like, you know, we're getting to the bottom of all of this um, and it's gonna take some time, but um, yeah, it's, we want to hear from you as as much as um, you want to give us your feedback. Yeah, what was the deal with those test results in 2019? Yeah, so from what I understand, um, they were used, they, they took the results or they took the testing um, to kind of inform the level of, uh, you know, water quality that they wanted to do with the new drinking water facility. And, you know, I don't know, um, I don't know exactly how, how that went down yet. Um, you know, I wasn't here. <laughs> so, oh, right. So, you know, just still kind of figuring out like, should there have been, you know, should we have submitted those results? What should we have done? Um, I'm not sure yet, but, you know, again, we have a million open records requests related to that. So we'll all be looking through those um, yeah. eventually to figure out mm -hmm. like, what should we have done? How can we do better going forward? You know, that's part of this too. Like we want to fix the problem now. We want to fix the problem uh, moving forward for the new facility. Um, but we also want to look back and say, what could we have done better? Do you know how long these standards, this, this, this advisory of 20 parts per trillion has been in place? So it sounds to me, obviously, so we had some changeover between Governor Walker and Governor Evers' administration in 2019. So mm -hmm. sometime in 2019, that's when that standard um, was developed. Now, gotcha. I, I think I have on my desk right there covered in things. Um, <laughs> they, 
put uh, Evers put together a task force, and I think those results maybe came out in October yeah. of 2019. So again, like there are some timelines that are kind of strange um, that we're looking to match up. Mm-hmm. And obviously, there was a big changeover uh, with the Biden administration and the Trump administration, right? So like right. the EPA is working on different things and more mm-hmm. robust, and has a little bit, you know, it's, you know, it does matter sometimes yeah. who's at the top. Well, the yeah, and the bottom, I mean, the bottom line that I've been hearing is people are like, okay, can I drink the water or not? Oh yeah. And it's hard because I don't know that there's this. Yeah. I, I don't uh, feel equipped to give individual health, um, you know, right. information, yeah. but I mean, I can tell you that we're working on getting below that 20 parts per trillion. And once we're there, I feel confident saying you're okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but at yeah. this point, you know, you have to decide um, how you want to approach it. And um, I know that's not comforting, um, but you know, that's where we are right now. All right. Yeah, so a big shout out to Mayor Katie Rosenberg for sitting down with the, the Keep It Awesome podcast today for a little bit, just to kind of talk about this PFAS stuff. As you can see, it's complicated. I even had it wrong <laughs> about the uh, the Natural Resources Board. It turns out they passed drinking water standards that they matched it to the uh, 70 parts per trillion of the EPA. So anyway, I thought it was really important to put this out there today. And so that's our episode for the month. And uh, thanks so much for everyone for watching. Like I said, this is something that I'm going to keep following. You know, there's no easy answers on a lot of this stuff. So uh, keep paying attention. Do what you think is best for the safety of your family. Stay safe out there, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Keep it awesome.